All right, buddy, welcome back to Ox Talks. It is Wednesday, April 24th, 2024. I appreciate you watching the videos. Thanks for subscribing to the channel, supporting the channel. If you're not subscribed, uh, please do so. Please like and share. Most importantly, please share the videos with your family, friends, and colleagues so we can continue to spread uh, the word about what's happening with the economy, uh, with a political situation, uh, with a whole host of things that are just having a pile-on effect across this country right now. A couple of these issues we're going to discuss today that I saw in the news. So appreciate you guys being here again. Thank you for supporting the channel. Let's start with uh, a, a topic that I discussed a couple days ago, and that was the uh, at that point the House of Representatives had approved three different bills which were going to fund almost a hundred billion dollars split between Ukraine, uh, support for Israel, and then I think Taiwan as well. And so, of course, the Senate, I believe yesterday, last night, uh, quickly uh, passed the bills that were put before it by the House. As of today, I read that uh, the president has signed that into law. So it's amazing how quickly something can happen when you have the political powers that align, uh, they can just rush it right through. Uh, yet on many things that are affecting this country, we discuss a lot on this channel, uh, it just seems to get bogged down in red tape and dissension and nothing happens. So I hope you all are paying attention to that. Things can happen very quickly when the powers that be want it to. So on the back now, we discussed also buried in that legislation that now is gonna, is now law uh, was that um, was that ability or the provisions that allowed U.S. to basically seize a Russian assets and monies and financial institutions in this country, the United States, and then basically send those assets and those proceeds uh, to Ukraine. And I said, look, this could be, this is poking the bear, but it could be the start of a very, very bad situation that impacts this economy. And not just by Russia responding, which they said they would, but also by other countries responding and either pulling their investments and assets out of the United States or taking other measures uh, to, let's say, guard themselves. So t I see an article today, it was at the, I saw from the Watcher Guru, and it's entitled, Russian Court to Seize $440 Million from J.P. Morgan. It says, Russia is set to seize $440 million in funds from the largest U.S. bank, J.P. Morgan. Indeed, the action is connected to a lawsuit filed by lender VBT to attempt to recover losses from the U.S.-based bank, according to a report from the Financial Times. It says the decision from Russian courts followed what the country perceived as illegal actions from the United States. Specifically, the U.S. Senate passed legislation sending seized Russian assets to Ukraine as part of its security assistance. The development led Russian lawmakers to seek the confiscation of Western assets in within Russia. So this is, again, it's now ratcheting up. Uh, shots have been fired. We have legislation that's now uh, no longer legislation. It's now law. So we'll continue to report on how this, um, how this continues to accelerate. But these it could be, you might say, well, $440 million to J.P. Morgan, who cares? We don't like Jamie Dimon anyway. Some of you might be saying, but the point is, is that this happened quickly. The thing was just signed in the law last night. Russia's already out and taking countermeasures. So it's just the beginning. So a related story from my perspective has to do with this, uh, you, this Israeli-Palestinian uh, conflict. And what we have now is cropping up across uh, college campuses, excuse me, on college campuses across this country are pro-Palestinian protesters. And they're basically, whether it's a mix of students and some paid protesters or other uh, groups that are funded and intended to disrupt the campuses, it's probably a combination of all of that. 
But the point is, is these groups are storming campuses, they're setting up these encampments and tents uh, in the common areas on these college campuses everywhere across this country. I was watching some of the video feeds posted up on X, and uh, look, it's, it's not peaceful necessarily. I've seen a lot of clashes with students, a lot of panic as these people are rushing in the campuses. You have some campuses sending out their campus police, their local police, the, the police forces are in riot gear and they're pushing back uh, these, these protesters. It's loud, they're firing things, they're bringing in drums. It's just very, very disruptive and appears to me to be somewhat violent uh, obviously, intimidation is intended, but I think we need to keep a very close watch on this. Uh, we, we all know we're in a very, very uh, uh, divided country right now from, from, from a lot of perspectives. Obviously, economically, uh, our, our socio strata, so to speak, is, is more divided than it's ever been. The gap between uh, the rich and the poor is wider than it's ever been. The middle class basically doesn't even exist anymore. Uh, we have you know social division. We have political division. And when does you know on on the on the heels of having everything costs more, inflation running rampant, people are frustrated, they're angry, and now we have this on top of it coming into the summer months in this country. So um, look, it, it's a powder keg. It's a recipe for disaster. And I want to share this article with you from the Zero Hedge. It just came out just a couple hours ago. And it says, the situation is unraveling. Pro-Palestinian protests erupt across America's colleges. Colleges and universities across the country are struggling this week to keep pro-Palestinian protesters off school grounds. Students and or perhaps a mix of professional protesters um, are storming campuses and setting up encampments. This is likely a coordinated effort nationwide as other pro-Palestinian demonstrators have been busy shutting down critical infrastructure across the country, such as airport terminals, bridges, and other checkpoints that could disrupt the economy. Moments ago, pro-Palestinian protesters has invaded Harvard University, setting up encampments in the Harvard Yard. And it's, it shows on X uh, footage of the protesters storming uh, the campus. On Monday night, police arrested, it says, protesters at New York University, ended, which ended a multi-day standoff. On Wednesday, Texas Department of Public Safety troopers were deployed to the University of Texas in Austin to also counter protesters. Students... Um, erected a pro-Palestinian encampment at the University of Southern California, and that's unfolding today. Uh, the situation down at USC uh, is getting worse. The campus of California, also camp campus of Poly California Polytechnic State University, has been closed after a group of pro-Palestine protesters occupied a building on campus. I saw some video on that. Police rushed the building and... Um, what happened was the, the protesters were occupying the building, they clashed with riot police, and the protesters in this case were actually able to drive the police uh, back out of the building. So we have tensions flaring across this country. I'm not uh, in any way weighing in on what side of this, um, let's say, issue you're on. Uh, but we have, look, we have a U.S. Congresswoman Ilan Omar told students at the University of Minnesota on Tuesday that she was incredibly moved by the protesters. So we have some in positions of power in the government that are also out there, you know, uh, you know, supporting this. I don't want to say egging it on, but it sounds like that might be, you know, what it is. So let's keep a watch on it. You know, all of these things impact us. You may not be on a college campus today. You may not live by a college campus. But it's just a matter of time till this stuff start, starts infiltrating everywhere, okay? And with everyone being on high, uh, on edge in this country because of their financial situation, because of their, uh, let's say, their unhappiness with the political situation, uh, this is just set to explode. And it looks like uh, it's happening as we speak. The next article, the last one I'll share with you, was also out of the Zero Hedge today. 
And it says, watch migrants gone wild on streets of Midtown Manhattan. And this was another uh, video posted on X. Uh, this shows a pack of illegal aliens viciously fought each other with sticks, belts, and whatever they could get their hands on outside a migrant hotel in Midtown Manhattan. It says the row, R-O-W, is one of the many hotels and shelters converted to, uh, to house illegal aliens in New York City from the open southern border. About 2,000 migrants have flooded the city since early 2022. Uh, says there are, are as many as 64,000 in these shelters. So the again, that video, you can f- pull up the stuff on X that I saw. What well, appeared pretty aggressive, uh, pretty violent. Guy was riding his bike, got taken off the bike, got involved in, in this altercation. Uh, guys were coming from behind and choking guys, pulling them down to the ground. So again, more violence, more clashes, uh, more uh, just ongoing strife uh, in the United States. Meanwhile, if you were just watching the stock market, earnings came out today, uh, market you know, c- couldn't care less. I, I didn't even see much. You're not going to see this kind of news necessarily over on uh, CNBC uh, or CNN uh, in terms of, and, and if it is, it's obviously going to have a little different spin. So just want to bring this all to your attention. I've been really busy this week so far, so it's possible that I'm kind of behind uh, the curve a bit on 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 reporting on it and and reading about it, but it's uh, it's it's depressing. It's disheartening. You know, w- you know, those of us that get up every day and go to work just want to make a better life for our for ourselves and our family. Try to do the right thing. You, you have to have all of this bombarding you all the time. And again, let's see where it goes. I I would not be surprised. If these situations continue to deteriorate, we're going to see more violence, more crime waves. And we discuss a lot about uh, you being self-sufficient, being able to defend yourself uh, and defend your family. And that means you have to take some, you have to think about this ahead of time. You have to put security measures in place. Uh, you have to get trained with whatever your, uh, whatever your uh, tool of choice is going to be. And you have to be on guard because you never know when this stuff, whether it's from protesters, whether it's from the, uh, the uh, illegal immigrants coming in, whatever it is, it's just a matter of time till, you know, we all are confronted with this thing on our front doorstep. So I'm not going to go too, too long today. Those, those topics just rung very important to me that I want to share the market was flat. Gold and silver were, were flat. Um, but this stuff, I think, is something that we really have to uh, really, really pay attention to. I'm going to be getting a workout in this afternoon like I always do for an hour today. I hope you guys can do the same thing. Get your steps in. Uh, do some weight training and, and be, be, uh, be cognizant of the diet. With that being said, have a great uh, afternoon and evening, and I should see all of you tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Bye.